Alright, let's see here. Just one more thing. Ah, finally! About time. Human, are you awake? Hmm, guess not. Morning, human. How are you feeling? Ah, that's... I think that's good. No difficulty sleeping, then? I'd say that's a first for your few organic rests here. I think the first time you passed out from exhaustion rather than having a genuine <laughs> night's rest. Anyway, I did say I needed you fully conscious for today, so we'd better get started. Sit up for me. I need to take your vitals. I suppose while I do that, I should fill you in on today's schedule. After vitals, I need to run a few tests just to confirm some hypotheses of mine. It might be mildly uncomfortable for you, but I'm confident that you'll manage. What, nothing to say to that? No panicking, no snarky comments? Do you even understand what I'm telling you? Can you hear me? Well, that's good at least. A nod is better than nothing. Nice to know I didn't give you too much. Now, hold out your arm. I need to take your blood pressure. Hmm. Some difficulty there. Ah, there we go. Hmm. I'm not going to lie, dearest. Seeing your pupils all blown out like that certainly is a sight to behold. The way you're gazing at me. It's like I'm the only thing in your little world. It's almost cute. I wonder how you're feeling right now. Are you scared? Confused? Or is it just radio silence up there? I can't say I remember much about what it's like being you. But I can't help but wonder if you're suffering. I don't even know if I'd care much if you were. I think I'm just riding off the high of success here. Oh, there's a look. You're so lost right now. Do you need me to spell it out for you? Do you need some assistance? You have nothing to worry about in that head of yours anymore. No fears, no worries, no pesky stray independent thoughts. I've got you under my thumb now, dearest. You know, it's almost a shame. If this truly is all there is to this method, I'm gonna have to turn you loose. I was kinda getting used to having you around too. You still haven't figured it out? Maybe I fried the last few brain cells you had left. Well, only time will tell. I do have to run these tests first. <sighs> your blood pressure looks fine. I can hear that your pulse is a bit slow, though. That might just be because you aren't scared out of your mind for once. This might be more normal for you. You seem less alert than you should be, though. I'm not even pushing that hard. Maybe if I ease off a little. Ah, oh, your pupils shrink. I guess I was pushing a bit hard. It's been quite some time since I've had to will someone. I guess I could see the appeal. Having someone bend over backwards to see your needs met. Maybe I could entertain the idea of keeping you around if Liza would allow it. Having an assistant seems... Well, anyway. Still nothing up there then. This might be a problem. I imagine it's hard to follow orders when you're so lost you can barely move your head. Perhaps I let too much into the air after all. Maybe if I ventilate this space, I'll have to turn on a fan. I may not have a successful report to send over to Liza after all. Looks like I won't be able to let you go. What was that? Are you trying to say something? Try that again. Tears. Are you crying? Why are you crying? You shouldn't be able to do that. Ah, oh, shit. Hello? Ah, Master. Good evening. Ah, well, I... I believed I'd made substantial progress in the human's mutational development, but it seems that there's been an error. Yeah, well, it appears they aren't taking well to the amount of vapor I put in the air. I'm barely pushing in there, too. Pliant? It's almost like they need explicit orders to think. I'll admit, it's... Ah, uh, right. Sorry, ma'am. What is it you wanted to discuss? You, you sent them out already. But I needed more time to ensure that... Yes, ma'am, I understand that. 
But with the lack of influence, I imagine it would be difficult to keep them on course. A change of plans. What do you mean? You what? But that entirely negate. No, no, I understand what you're doing, Master. But this actively goes against our agreement. You said if I turned myself over that... No! This was the one condition I was allowed. You said you would let me handle the VHLF as long as I was working for you. Right now, looks like you're going back on me. And you're sending a vampire with them actively exposes their location. That's a breach of my condition. My one condition. You're putting the entire rest of the organization in danger. You said you weren't going to hurt them. I'm doing my job. I'm following up on our arrangement, Liza. I'd say I'm sufficiently punished. I'd more than recover the work I destroyed. I've gotten me further than you ever did by yourself. Haven't I earned this one thing? This one mercy? What? No, that's not fair. You'd be nowhere without me. I never even asked to be saved, Liza. I don't owe you anything. But you, you owe me everything. The last time I checked, Liza, your artificial thrall was flawed. I shouldn't have been able to break free around you at all, let alone enough to sabotage you. Your hubris left you and your work vulnerable, and that's why you failed. If you intend to infringe on my one condition, I have no obligation to continue with my work. Oh? You're already doing that then, aren't you? Actively backing out on our deal for the sake of your benefit. You council members are always looking for ways to screw us over, aren't you? <sighs> well, best of luck getting those humans where you think bases. You're gonna need it. God, why did I? They're gonna kill me. Fuck, they're gonna kill me. Get it together. Get it together. Right, you're still here. Hopefully you're too out of it to process what I'd said. But unfortunately for the both of us, we have a bit of an emergency and I can't afford to leave you to your devices. Hopefully I can kill two birds with one stone here. I think fresh air would do you a bit of good. Your eyes are still... <laughs> Shit, I don't have time for this. Can you stand? I don't even know why I asked. I'm just gonna have to carry you. All right. Up we go. That's it, dear. I'm not even sure why I'm bothering to engage with you right now. I know you can hear me. I just don't think you're comprehending a single thing I'm saying. Maybe if I willed you, but that's a bit counterproductive right now. Just in case, though, I, I guess I should give you the rundown on what we're going to be doing. <sighs> you and I are going to get to the BHLF before Liza's men do. We need to warn them. If they don't believe me, that's, well, that's going to be a problem. But hopefully, you'll be around enough to convince them to get the hell out of Dodge. And if you're not, I'd like to think I can take on a bunch of humans. Let's just hope the vampire that's with them is less capable than I. I'll think of something with a bit more structure the closer we get. That all depends on whether or not your brain decides it wants to stop hanging on every word I say. You look a bit better. Maybe ventilation was what you needed after all. Only one way to find out, though. Can you say something for me? Oh, come on now. I can see you thinking in there. Ah, the tears are... You're crying. You're crying in earnest. I... No, dear. I can't say that's not a conscious response. You're you enough to cry. Not that you weren't crying before. You very clearly were. I, I just assumed your body was crying in response to something I was doing. Not that you yourself were crying. It's... <clears throat> Moving on. If you keep crying, I believe you might get stopped, dearest. And I don't believe I still have enough clearance to go where I'm going with a human who's independent enough to cry. I know it's been a few days, but do you remember what I taught you your first night in the lab? That breathing exercise? <sighs> we can talk about what happened once we're in the sewers. I'm sure you have an earful for me. But right now, I need you to calm down so you can get out of here, okay? I'm sure you can manage that. Deep breath, hold, exhale. Remember?
Good job. I'm going to need you to do that four more times while we move, all right? I won't be able to walk you through it this time. I've got to play my part as well. I just hope the word hasn't spread yet. Word that I'm no longer needed. Now, back to focusing on your breathing. Now's not a good time to derail me. Though I'm glad you can muster the strength to say one word at least. That's promising. <sighs> My ID still works. That's a good sign. I'd still prefer if we got out without being spotted, though, obviously. This wing is usually occupied by a few willed interns operating under Liza's influence. They'll probably call security if they see us, so we need to be quick. There's a hatch leading to the sewers in the room at the end of the hall. Only I had the clearance, so as long as my badge isn't nullified in the next minute or so, we should have nothing to worry about. Good work on your breathing. How are you feeling strength-wise? Do you think you'll be able to walk? <sighs> Let's hope. We'll see when we get there. We're in the home stretch now, just, just a little longer, and... <sighs> that went surprisingly well. I suppose it would take some time for Liza's will to reach the intern since she's on the other side of the building. Knowing her, though, she's going easy on us. The other shoe's bound to drop any minute. I'm putting you down now. You ready? There we go. All right, steady. Do you feel fine standing? Walking? Good. Because I really don't want to carry you the rest of the way. It doesn't go down too far, so you shouldn't have trouble with the rungs. But I'll go down first in case you fail. All right, your turn. Come on. The way Liza talked about taking them out, she'd implied they'd be leading the way. They'll likely choose the civilian entrance to the sewers, since that's all they know. The closest entrance is about an hour walk from the lab. The call... Hmm. Now I've lost track of time. She just sent them out when she rang, so they... Hmm. How long has it been? Not that knowing would make much of a difference. We should make it there before them, regardless. Good thing, too. I don't want you running just yet. I think you're stable enough to handle walking, but I think you still need to air your brain out. I don't think running would do you any favors. Speaking of which, how are you feeling? <sighs> you hate me. I wouldn't expect anything less. I'd be more upset if you didn't hate me, actually. I kidnapped you, drugged you, essentially fried your brain. If it weren't for Liza's betrayal, frankly, I think I would have broken you. If you didn't hate me, I would assume I already had. <laughs> Isn't that ironic? I took you with the intention of trying to fix you, but I made you nothing but putty in seconds. Without so thinking about it, breaking you was what my goal was all along, wasn't it? I was so desperate to justify what I was doing that I... <clears throat> anyway, you didn't answer my question. How are you feeling? Well, that's certainly an improvement. You have your attitude back, at the very least. Guess I would have missed it after all. What was what all about? So you understood what I was saying after all? I was really hoping you wouldn't catch that. Fine, sure. I'll answer some of your questions. But ask too many and we're walking in silence for the rest of the trip. Sound good? How many is too many? We'll figure that out. <laughs> Let's just get on with it. What was my deal with Liza? You just had to start off with that one, didn't you? I suppose I can't blame you. I'd be curious about that too. It's quite a long story if I get into it. You might not have time to ask anything else. You sure that's what you want to know? It'd be like killing two birds with one stone if it answers your other burning inquiries. All right, then. Fine. There's a saying. To kill a snake, one must cut off its head. Are you familiar with it? It was one of the first things she said to me when I was taken. At the time, the VHLF hadn't been around too long. About two or so years, max. 
We didn't have much manpower or strength, but we had been causing enough trouble to catch the attention of the public. Of course, they were all confused. They hadn't believed they were in any danger. It's not like they were aware that their lives weren't theirs anymore. We would protest, usually. It's all we could do when we first started out. Large campuses with a big human-to-vampire ratio were our targets. It was working as well as it could at the time. We found other immunes hiding in the droves of the influenced. After we had around 50 or so members, we decided to find a place to meet up, since our current arrangements weren't going to cut it. The sewers were, unfortunately, the perfect place for something like this. With it being underground, the wheel couldn't reach the influenced. Not to mention, it's not the first place people come looking. Over the course of a few weeks, our numbers began to dwindle. A few members here, a few members there. Not because they didn't want to show, but because they just up and vanished. We'd asked family members, landlords, bosses, but nobody knew where they got to. I'm sure you're familiar with the concern. It was the council, obviously. But no matter what they did, none of us wanted to stop. I didn't want us to stop. I kept leading them to protests or trying to get them to hand out leaflets or whatever I was trying to do at the time. Looking back, it almost seems pretty futile. What's a handful of people and some paper going to do against them? Such naive thinking. You're lucky you have more resources these days. I'm almost impressed with your setup. Anyway, it took them about three months to actually get me. And that's because I sought them out. Yeah, sounds familiar. I set myself up to be kidnapped. I'd broken all the safety protocols I'd set up in place by that point to try and see who'd find me. Fortunately, or unfortunately for me, Liza was the one who ended up taking the bait. I thought maybe I'd play her game and get some answers. But she saw through me almost immediately. She'd admitted she'd been waiting for something like this to happen. <sighs> who knows? But either way, by that point, I was at her mercy. I was trying to stand my ground as best I could, but you can only do so much against a vampire as a human, let alone a council member. Asking my questions was really the only ground I had left to stand on. She told me her goal, which I'm sure you can figure out, and said that my missing comrades were being used as lab rats down at the council building. I'd asked for some sort of trade-off, myself for them. But she said that most had been lost to some sort of complication or had been sent off to be used as food when they failed to cooperate. Aren't you feeling a bit lucky now? Had I not died, you likely would have been stuck with her instead. Yes, I died. I'm getting there, just, just keep listening. I'd asked for her to elaborate on the complications she'd mentioned. That's where it all started. She said that she was assigned by the council to work on a cure for vampiric immunity. And since we were so willingly making ourselves known in recent months, she was taking note of who was immune by gauging our crowds. And then she'd send people after them on their way home. <laughs> yeah, this was way before you guys set up camp down there. Seems you learned from their mistakes. Not too sure when you guys started doing that either. Sounds uncomfortable, sleeping in the sewers like some sort of rodent. Yeah, yeah, back to the deal. Jeez, you're more patient than I remember. I offered myself up for experimentation. That for as long as I lived, that I would be her guinea pig, and she would do whatever she needed to me in order to spare them from the brunt of the pain. She thought it was ridiculous that I would do such a thing for a group of strangers. <laughs> yeah, it is a very vampire way of thinking. Especially when you're in the thousands like she is. But she didn't turn me down, surprisingly. The VHLF, being as new as it was, lacked structure. She believed I was the thing holding it together, which at the time was pretty fair. I did most of the heavy lifting and organizing at the time, and I didn't really have a second in command. So, by her logic, the VHLF should have fizzled out with my absence. She took me up on my deal because she assumed that they would quit. I had faith in them, however. Perhaps too much, looking back on it. That's what led to the second arrangement, after all. The time I spent as a human in her care is hard to think about. There was more trial and error than genuine progress going on. I felt like death most of the time, like my body was rotting from the inside out, dying more and more with each failed experiment. 
I had hope through all this, however. Hope that my comrades would fight on and prosper. That maybe, just maybe, they'd come back for me. They'd save me from the hell I resigned myself to. It was stupid. I knew that even if they did come to save me, I'd still have to keep my deal in return for their safety. But the thought that they cared enough about me to try was nice to think about. No, they never came back. I never heard from them again. And while they were too busy hiding, I was having my mind ripped from me. I'd given myself up for people who didn't even care. <sighs> Les's experiments were slow and grueling, but they were yielding results. Flimsy, unreliable results, sure, but that's more than the council had ever seen by that point. Her will worked strangely. Instead of feeling like what I was doing was what I'm meant to be doing, my mind hadn't caught up to my body's feeling on the matter. I was trapped in my own body for months, years maybe. My only reprieve was when she was out of reach. Her artificial influence lacked the ability to withstand long distances. I don't think she paid him much mind at the time, since she basically lived in that damn lab of hers. But she certainly found out when she was forced to attend a council meeting on the other side of the building. <laughs> How very observant. Yes, I did do something. I set the lab on fire. <laughs> oh, your face. Oh, that's perfect. If only you could see yourself right now. Uh, I've always wondered how someone would react when I told them that. Thank you, dearest. But yes, I set the lab on fire. In my newly acquired state of independence, I thought I'd set back her progress. All her work was recorded on hard drives and files, so a fire, with the technology being as it was at the time, was enough to set her back quite a while. There was just one last milestone to be rid of. <sighs> yes, that's right. Myself. I thought I'd set her back so far she'd have no choice but to start over. And with my lack of respect growing for my former comrades, I thought I'd spite her alongside putting myself out of my misery. Morbid, yes. But I was beyond saving. A mere shell of a man with nothing to lose. What would you have done? Surely not live as a puppet to a woman who isn't even aware she's failed. I was so close to winning. I was so close to freedom. I could smell it in the air. That smell being chemicals and noxious gases. But as you can no doubt guess, it failed. Miserably, I might add. I don't remember much after my brain started giving into the fumes, but according to Liza, she found me lying there amongst the remains of her research and sired me without thinking much of it. Hmm. I can see where you'd be confused. I did say I died. And I did, technically, by all intents and purposes. Vampires are undead, after all. If you were to lay your head on my chest, you wouldn't hear a heartbeat. You're more than welcome to see if you're yourself. Any more questions? Or shall I finally get to my extremely long-winded point? <laughs> Was I always this intolerable? Hmm, maybe. I personally like to think I'm charming. Moving on. With my unfortunate survival, I had no choice but to live alongside her as a vampire. And with the lack of tangible research, aside from myself, she had to start over. But this time, she had me which was something I hadn't really thought about. I mentioned it briefly, but I always loved science. I was going to school to become a medicinal chemist at the time, actually. The fact that someone like me was forced into Liza's lap for all eternity was, uh, unfortunately, ideal. She'd forced me to be her apprentice and to use what I'd known about being a subject to help further the development of our cure. She thought it was a worthy punishment. But after coming to my senses a bit, I decided to try and strike another deal with her. Yeah, like that worked out so well for me the first time, right? This one actually did work out well enough. That is, until she went back on it 20 minutes ago. I was bitter and spiteful at the VHLF's willingness to leave me behind. But at the same time, Liza wasn't going to get my devotion anytime soon. So I proposed I take care of the VHLF so I can spite them both at the same time. She never learned where it was, and I wanted to keep it that way. And it worked, surprisingly. <sighs> yeah. 
And now we're here after decades of that. Say, did that answer all of your burning inquiries? Are you thoroughly informed now? Good. But it seems, with even after my story, we've got some time left before we arrive. Do I have any questions for you? Yeah, I guess. But I don't really have a need for those answers anymore, considering I'm not actively looking to rewrite your mind anytime soon. Using the information to make an antidote. Now that's something. With the VHLF's new setup, it might even be possible. Perhaps I'll try and use that to get into good graces over there. If we beat your friends to the punch, that is. About that, though. Are you prepared? To see your friends in such a state. They might say some things they don't mean if they acknowledge you at all. Are you going to be alright? Well, we're in this together now, aren't we? We'd be no good if you wilted at the sight of your friends. I'd have to save you again, and not only would that be a pain, but I'm sure it'll wound your ego. You'll be fine? Are you sure about that? You essentially sacrificed yourself to save them. I would assume if they meant so much to you, seeing them like that would be uncomfortable, to put it lightly. Oh, how noble. I suppose I was right in my assumption then. You don't really know these people. You just thought it was the right thing to do. <laughs> oh yes, we're saving these people. But I still don't really care much for them. To be completely honest with you, dearest, I'm more doing this to spite Liza than really switching sides here. Perhaps that will change with time, but for right now, I still think your efforts are foolish. I'm only helping you and your group out because it will help me. I meant what I said about the VHLF. I still think they're a sad shell of a group. I think they've lost sight of their original plan. You lot do nothing but scope out your fellow immunes and hide in the sewers like rats. Perhaps with my help, you'll actually become something. 73 years of pent-up hatred doesn't go away overnight, you know. I just... How should I put this? If I have the ability to make this group worth something, I'll do so. But it's more out of a common interest. The enemy of my enemy and all that. Perhaps with some time and proof, I'll grow to care about these people again. But don't count on it. Do, do I care about you? I, I certainly care about you more than them, if that says anything. No, I think you knew that already. Unfortunately, I don't believe I was hiding it as well as I should have. Especially if Liza cut on so easily. I suppose it's because you reminded me of myself. It was strange seeing someone like you in the VHLF these days. Someone with drive and a sense of justice, no matter how foolish it was. I played along with your fear of needles because I, I wanted to have you around a bit longer. I knew at the end I'd have to turn you over, but I wanted to stall. You made for an interesting subject. I even considered... Anyway. Though, I did think it would be worthwhile to make a non-injectable form of the virus, considering how skeptical you immunes tend to be towards any modern medicine. I can't say I blame you. We did plant some things out there on the market from time to time. You're with me now, because I didn't want to leave you there. If I left you, you'd probably end up with Liza and be sent out with the rest of your friends. Either that, or she might do something worse to spite me. And I didn't want to see that happen to you. Oh, shut up. If that makes you feel better to think about it like that, then go ahead. I know where I lie on my thoughts about you. Say, dearest... I think I do have a question for you before we arrive. Would you be so kind as to humor me? What is your name? Oh, uh, what's with that look? I didn't know. 
But we're in this together now, aren't we? I think it's only right that I learn it. <laughs> it suits you. You're quite welcome, dear. Oh, uh, why still use dear? Oh, because it suits you more. <laughs> ah, I look forward to working with you. It's going to be quite the adventure, I'm sure. Oh, and would you look at that? Looks like we finally made it. Are you ready? There's no turning back now. Splendid. Let's go.